Hello and welcome to the final part in our lockpick mini game mini series. Previously, we've worked on showing the actual mechanic in action. However, we aren't really feeding back to the player when they are successful. So in this episode, we're going to go through the process of adding force feedback to our lockpicks so that the player then knows through the haptics when they are in the right position. So let's get started. So to create a force feedback, we need to go into our content drawer here and we go to add and you'll look for the feedback uh, option, which I think is, yeah, in miscellaneous, you'll see force feedback effect. We choose this one and this is going to be our uh, name for it. It's going to be pick lock uh, left. Okay, and you're going to open this up. So in the left pick lock vibration here, we're going to turn off the right ones. And I also want to turn off the left small one, uh, no, left large one. We'll keep the left one, uh, uh, small one on. Then you have the curve, and this is where you design the shape and sort of like strength of your force feedback. So you're going to just shift click on here to add a point. And the time is for how long it's going to take. Now I want to just do this to set to one, um, but we'll make this loop obviously when we're inside of the actual um, lock itself. We set to one with a value of 0.3, something quite subtle, uh, but you can tweak this to your liking by just going to the content browser. And if you click on the actual thumbnail here, you, you get a preview of it in your control if you've got one connected. So yeah, I quite like the feel of that one. That feels quite nice. So that's the left one done. I need to do, duplicate this to create the right one. Duplicate, hit clock, right. And the only difference with this one is I want to use the right small motor, not the left one. Okay, now we're going to go back to our pick lock mini game. Now the pick lock mini game is going to rumble these when our sticks are in the right position for the left and the right independently. So at the moment these are all being checked within one and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this lot here for the left thumbstick into a function. Collapse to function. And this would be left pick check. And we're going to just go into here and remove one of the booleans here because there's no need one of them. And open it up. And the return node is going to be an and in here. And boolean. That goes into there. Okay. That's been set like so. And then we're going to hit compile and make this a pure cast here. Like that. We're then going to go back to our other one and do the same thing. And we're going to do collapse the function and we'll do right pick check again going here we don't need both of these outputs we need one of them so we'll just put an and in here and put that in there and we'll make this a pure cast as well a pure function as well so um yeah now if we go back to this check out that and we've got these two checks going on and I don't need all four of these ands now, I can get rid of those two. Um, we'll just put that in that one and just clear with that one and remove that one. Okay, so there are our checks to allow it to be destroyed and opened and whatnot. But what I want to do is, before that happens, is check it to also run our vibrations. So in here, we're going to do client, uh, sorry, not client, get player controller. And from there, you're going to do client play force feedback. And the force feedback we're going to use here, this is for the left one. We're going to click on here and we do pick lock left. And we're going to tick looping for this. And this is only going to happen if our, our uh, left pick check here is true. So drag that out and put that into a branch. And if that's true, it will go into play force feedback there. If it is false, we need to tell it to stop the force feedback. So from player controller here, we'll do client stop force feedback. Plug that into the force and choose the force feedback effect for left. And this will be just one test going on here. So I'll move this up here. Oh, hello. There. 
And this will be a sequence now. So sequence will go in here. The first thing it will do is rumble the left one. Then we're going to do the same thing but rumble the right one. So just copy this and paste it in. And we're going to change this to be the right pick check and change this to use the right force feedback effect. Then we're going to add a final sequence pin and this one is going to be used for our check to actually open it. So we're going to test that out now and it the door. And here we are, we can now figure out where it is. So now that's vibrating for me for the left stick. So I just need to find the right stick. Need subtle movement. So it doesn't always mean in this, in this car setup, it also supports like in between values and so not just the extreme edges. So need to keep tweaking this to our find. Maybe the tolerance is too low. Where are you? So it's not in it. Oh, there you go. It's there. So if I then move this one over here, done. B. Okay. Now that is still vibrating for me. So I just need to, and I can't move my character. So I just need to return control back to the character and stop all feedback. So let's go to our pick lock mini game. And on the uh, end result here, we move destroy actor, remove from parent, and things like that. We're going to do client force feedback stop. And we're going to copy those into the end here so we don't get any more vibrations. And that in there, like so. And you may also want to, uh, for readability's sake, is move the destroy actor here to the end, by the way. Um, but before we do that, uh, we do want to put in the control back to the player so we're going to do basically the inverse of what we did on begin play so we're going to get disable input on self i'll get in the player controller and then we want to enable input on the player character And plug that in there. Now we're going to end things with the destroy actor. So let's play test that again and hit play. Go up to our door, E, and then on our gamepad, we are going to move the sticks to find where they vibrate. Nope, there it is. There you go. Okay, and I'm now free. And door should now unlock. Now, the way we're going to make it unlock very, very easily, we're just going to go to our content. Uh, browser go to our pick lock here and we're going to invent dispatcher and in here we're going to do uh, lock on lock picked and you know, drag that out and do call at the end here now when it does that we need to tell our door to listen out for that effect so go to the door and when we spawn the pick lock minigame we're going to do bind event to um, where is it? Lock picked. And I'm going to drag that down to a custom event on lock picked to tell the door to be no longer locked. But it is locked, it's false. And if you want to open the door straight away as well, you can call open door. Otherwise, you can leave it off and let the player manually open the door themselves. Let's go up and do that and do one final test. Find our sweet spot. Oh. Uh, it's about there. There we go. And there we have it. We've now completed our lockpick mini game. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support and for voting for this series to be made this month. If you'd like to vote and be a part of the team over on Patreon, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can get all access to my videos early before anyone else as well as many other benefits as well. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.